good people of planet Earth. Welcome to another episode of Mason's Rugged Roads. On these mighty Africa twin. Good job, Kev. A little bit gnarly, sorry about that. <laughs> wind. Sorry about that. How are you doing? How are you brother? Yeah, ace. Yeah, yes. They went in yesterday morning. Nice. New seals. Yeah. Wicked. That looks a bit shiny. Because <laughs> I think there's trip one and trip two. Trip one, trip two, and then empty trip. So you get, right. you get as soon as it goes on a flashy light, yeah. it flags up another trip. Yeah. And you should be able to get that 50 miles out. Because your reserve, although mine's got a bigger tank, yeah. your reserve will still be the same. It's still, it should still be a gallon. Yeah, four and a half litres or whatever it yeah. is. But I had 1.2 left. So I just put 37 quid in that. Nice. 37, 37 quid. 37 quid in a bike. How wow. Cool. Mind you, you have got a bigger tank, but 37 so, squids. That was 21.8 litres. Go 
Don't forget it's clay, don't spin up. We must do a um, Top Gear takeoff. <laughs> Oh my god, this looks fucking awful. <laughs> right. I have no idea date that it was stony. <laughs> if it turns out, we'll go that way. If you take them on, I'm going to do some filming.
I should have got some good footage along there because I stayed in the field at the side and tried to get you going through puddles. Nice. Yeah, I'll give you give you my memory card and I'll bugger off now. Oh, um, sorry Richard, I do need to ask, how did the adjustment on your rear shock go? Well, the adjustment just I discovered that there was a sort of oily sort of fluid that was coming out of the shock. Absorber. That's not KTM's way of lubing things, no. Yes. Lubing the dust, <laughs> lubing the... Oh, lubing the outside. Yes, yes. Stops it going rough. You can get a better view. Bloody hell! It's called the moist... Yeah, yeah. It's called the moistener. <laughs> the moistener. Well, it's got character. It has, yeah, and a very bouncy ass. <laughs> some rugged roads lunch We've been out all morning, having a great time, out with Dan, out with Phil, and out with Kev. Mason has been riding around thinking there's something knocking, something's not right. You know when you're riding your motorcycle, and after a few thousand miles, even, even if you're out for the day, you get to that point and you can feel something's not right. We didn't know whether it was bearings, lower, headstock bearings. We gave Dan a go on it, he rode off, came back and said the same thing, something's not right. I literally put my finger through here. Hello. <laughs> That's definitely not right. Do that impression again, Phil. You're riding along and what? Imagine your surprise. <laughs> Imagine your surprise. <laughs> right, let's put whatever tools we've got on there and we'll try and get this done up. 27. 27. Let's see if we can do it up. I can, I've got tools to take this out. We can take the bars off and do it properly, shall we? Yeah, you don't gain anything because you've still got that bridge in it. Oh yeah, okay, we won't do that. Clever sod. Right, now I've just cut the um, microphone because of the wind. We've just done the running repair. Well, I say repair, we've just done the bloody headstock bolt up. What are the chances of that? Has anybody else on a Yamaha XTZ700 T7 experienced a headstock nut bolt coming loose? Things only done 3,000 miles.
grass. It's not just for cows.